Welcome back. This budget Stormcloud build has cleared tier 7 Avatar of Zir, and it's capable of clearing tier 10. It uses some easily acquired aspects which don't need perfect rolls, flexible affixes on your gear that typically can be placed in multiple spots, and just two uniques that both drop from Varshan. Essentially, this is the easiest build to slap together and clear AUZ for your tiers of Blood Glyph and level it up to some degree. Be mindful, this is in no way what I consider to be the top build for progressing as far as possible within AOZ. However, Druid is in a rough spot for this content, and the best builds aren't exactly enjoyed by all, so this is an alternative that you can easily replicate and still feel rewarded for your progress. I've covered the build in detail with prior videos that I'll leave in the description for anyone interested. Today, we'll talk about an important change to make when your character is ready, and that is swapping Aspect of Disobedience for Aspect of Might. With enough percent armor and werewolf form, we'll be capped for the enemies we face up to tier 10. We'll likely need more armor later, but we can take advantage of more damage reduction until then by making this change. You'll need to keep an eye on your own armor value for when you're ready to make the switch or experiment to see which gives you better results as the levels of the mobs vary depending on which tier you're farming. Once I broke 13,000 armor and werewolf, I made the switch and haven't looked back, and unfortunately that's the only reference point I can give you. The smaller screen is gameplay from a tier 10, and I'm showing you this so that you can see just how tanky the build is, which is why it will clear tier 10 eventually, if you continue to level your glyph. These mobs are tanked for 6 minutes before they go down, so it's safe to say damage is a limiting factor for this build at the moment. Nonetheless, it has far surpassed the expectation of clearing tier 1 just to give easy access to tons of players who weren't endgame ready or interested in other builds. My duo partner Ring and I have had great success running as a party as well. Petrify, Immobilize, Debilitating Roar are all really strong support skills, especially if your partner benefits from any of those crowd control effects or runs the vampiric power domination. Cyclone Armor allows you to peel for your partner as well, and your overall tankiness makes you a great engage, allowing your teammate to move freely and nuke, which has worked really well for us. When grouping, you'll get more benefit from swapping your own domination for Hectic, and it's possible to arrange your packs to run both of these without swapping anything else, which is convenient and fits the easy theme of the build. The previous videos didn't touch upon gameplay that much, and it's important to remember that you need to move or dash frequently. The only danger you really have is dying to a one-shot, which is typically from an elemental explosion. If you move often, carefully dashing to safe spots or stutter stepping, you'll find your survivability increases. This build is incredibly mobile, and you should take advantage of that. You can easily skip mobs, elites, rooms, and so forth, allowing you to reach shrines and ensure you have one for the guardians or just skip the mobs that aren't worth fighting whether it be low value or time to kill but your ability to clear higher tiers and your overall farm speed are greatly affected by just shrine hopping so make sure you get comfortable dashing around whether your boots have additional evade charges or refresh from attacking you'll be able to do this debilitating roar provides a damage reduction and damage boost with our setup blood howl absolutely shreds enemies including elites and petrify is basically an i win button for anything on the screen including the guardians at lower tiers cyclone armor is very good for splitting mobs allowing you to easily target damage reduction mobs or focus elites while buffs are active. Earthen Bulwark is an additional unstoppable if you get caught and provides a shield to help soak additional damage as well. Overall, the build is very easy to play. Just remember to keep moving as standing still while attacking will get you blown up until you learn the lesson. I've updated the build link to also include which affixes are working to continue progressing. Poison mobs are doable with this build as well. You just need some carefully timed bulwarks to cleanse it and remember you can attack the air to regen health as there's no requirement to actually hit a target with a vampiric power on dying. The most difficult mob type has actually been sanguine mobs with a blood bond, since it eats up a lot of time moving to and from them as they spawn. And that's the reason I showed this particular run, because it's still possible provided you take advantage of all the tips I've mentioned. I hope you're having success with this build, and I'll give you the next update after tier 10 is cleared solo. If there's any changes prior to that, I'll edit the pinned comments in the video. I'll let the remainder of the gameplay run out for anybody who's interested, and as always, thanks for taking the time to watch, and have a great day.